Hello and welcome to another special edition of the Braun Show here on Kid Fatu with me, Joy Mwama. And of course, I'm not alone in the studio. I have on um, my uh, far right, I have Nimosata Kamara, who is my co-host. And of course, on my immediate right, I have Mr. Lamin Cham, who's from the Standard Newspaper. And I like to call him our very own Mustafa K. Dabo is in the studio. Welcome, uh, gentlemen and lady. Thank, Thank you very you. much, guys. Today, indeed, will be a very special edition. Um, we will have the lineups going. Uh, Mr. Lamin Cham will take us through the newspaper review. And, of course, Mustafa will also take us through what we have on the Kit Fatu website. And our very own Nimaseta will also take us through what's trending or what have been trending over the week on our social media. So do stay tuned. Now we move over to Mr. Lamin Cham. Tell me what have been the most informative information that a uh, newspaper have been carrying over the week? There were several of them. Uh, the most high profile perhaps was the one towards the end of the week. <coughs> and unfortunately, we had a life, a life has been lost in the, uh, and believe it or not, we are talking about um, quarrels over caste system in this day and age, wow. <laughs> somewhere in the upper river region, we will talk about that in the papers. ICC officials, officials from the office of the prosecutor were in Banjo uh, here late this week, attending an international, you know, transitional justice uh, training for Anglophone journalists, and they again put up their argument as to why they did not intervene in the Gambia at the time of the political crisis uh, 2016. And uh, the whole world, I mean, commemorated the centenary anniversary of the end of the First World War. And we in the Gambia also have our own November 11. You know, ironically, the day the war ended 100 years ago was the day we had the most bloodiest chapter in our political history one in the recent decades, of course, because 1981, obviously was most bloody. But in November, November 11, 1994, we had the first blood shed uh, since the military junta at the time, headed by Lieutenant General, came to power. Victims of that massacre, and I'm sorry, they are going to be the first case perhaps that will be had at the TRRC, had a press conference at the Victim Center highlighting that, look, that event, the first bloodiest event, is still unresolved because survivors are here and people who actually allegedly participated in that atrocities are still serving members of the various security units and notably the army mm -hmm. so they were concerned that what you know why this is happening and they wanted justice all right so i'm very first, interested mm -hmm. with the caste um thing that happened in the upper river region what actually mm -hmm. happened well, frankly, I myself, I get, I get really, you know, very, very, very sad whenever I uh, have to go over this story. I mean, in that community, <coughs> Sarahule community, and of course, no offense intended here. Of course. It's, 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 it's in that community where it is, you know, habited by Sarahules. Yeah. The culture and the social, uh, how to call it, uh, setup, you know, what we call the caste system, this ones are smiths, this ones are crafts, this ones are called. It's very much embedded in the culture and the tradition of um, people from all over Africa. In the Soviet. But in this modern age, one would really feel very much disturbed that such things are really happening and have been, um, you know, have been exercised at the time when we have the common law, we have our constitution which protects people mm -hmm. from all these kind of isms, you know, these are things of the past. But then if you interpret it in another way, that's what the other side are trying to say, that nobody has the right to tell us to abandon our ways and conscience. Right. But I think this is one that has gone too far. And I think now the authorities should really weigh in and make sure that nothing like this is really promoted or to go out of hand before it splits into other communities. Because I know there is still an element of this kind of notion still mm -hmm. existing. Right. But if it only stop at culture and tradition and what used to happen in the past, like the Kabunkas and the, and the Fullers, or the, how to call it, the Badunkas and the Kians and mm -hmm. other things, uh, you know, the Marabus and the Kings and stuff, and, and the people used to be K 
kings, people who used to be Marabus, mm. would say each, would tell each other, well, we are Marabus, we don't get into politics. Yeah. You are the people who can so become have a joke kings. Relationship. We are imams, we stay on ours. Fine, there is no problem with that. Mm. But how this one got out of hand is, 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 is really a, a great concern. And I don't know whether, what mm. Mustafa and Nima would have to say before I move on. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really disturbing, and it's not just uh, a Sarahule thing. This is entrenched in every community, mostly in the rural areas. Mm -hmm. We have had this story before about the body bunkers who did not want a certain dead person to be buried in a, in a cemetery because apparently that person is a slave. Uh, Kerewan, right? So this happens. Mm -hmm. Besides the caste system, we also have other systems. For example, in my village, we have the Nyamalas, we have the Sulas who will not intermarry. Wow. And you have in one small village, this has their alcalo, the other has their alcalo, so they, they don't necessarily mix. Uh, this is a problem because historically, I mean, what I know about this personally is that the social stratification was both a social and a political system, as it used to happen in Europe also. You All have right. feudalism, mm -hmm. which has become uh, a key because it's no, it no longer works. Before it works in the sense that there should be a division of labor. People, because not, labor was not commoditized at the time. Yeah. It's not like I work for you and you pay me in monetary terms. Mm -hmm. So people need to fill in certain uh, fields which are necessary for community life. Mm -hmm. And I am thinking the caste system may have been introduced for that purpose. We need to have people who are ruling, we need to have people who are into trade, we of need course. to have people working on the farms. Mm -hmm. And so you have those relationships between the nobles and the so-called slaves. Come on commoners, yeah, based on the patronage system. Because somebody needs to work in the farm, somebody needs to work in our domestic arena, but we owe you a responsibility to protect you and to also provide for your livelihood. And this is how it used to happen. So it was based on both patronage and respect. Uh, in recent times, because of uh, perhaps... But we should are not, it go on? It shouldn't, that's what I'm saying. Systems have changed. Now, everybody is involved in everything. I'm no longer a commoner, somebody else is not necessarily a noble, because I can be a noble, I can also be a commoner, I can be a, a trader. So it, to strictly define somebody as associated with a certain caste is really wrong. It doesn't work anymore. So it means the trend and has the, changed. Tra tra the system has changed, we have evolved, we have become more civilized and more um, integrated to a point where nobody should be stationed in any place. division, if you look at the social certification at the time, or you look at it at this time, mm. it's evolved beyond the stratification, the lines that they've drawn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For instance, in those days, they would say, Dabo is a jula. I'm no jula, I'm a journalist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, they say, a kata is a mansa. Mm -hmm. A charm is a sweet. I, yeah, I agree. I am a very, I'm very pro culture. I, I I respect some of those things a lot. Um, if it were to come at a at a level of common sense, mm -hmm. I wouldn't disagree with it. But when it, it's used as a basis for violence, yes. I no, think okay. that is that That's is too much. Yeah. Even for division, that is too much. Yes. And also, if you look at it now. Those who are seen to have belonging to a particular social group that qualifies them for certain work mm -hmm. are not doing that work actually. Yeah. Like so those who are, like the Giryos are, have kept their own because they have a special place. But, they but then you have so many people who are Giryos. Then even, 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 even other people have crossed to become Giryos. Oh, yeah. yeah. who are not Sarif Sarif belongs to a noble class of Mansas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is but, one of... But it's a He's an artist. And people who, have not, people who have in the past nothing to do with Gerios have become Gerios. Gerios, that's what I'm saying. So now, now this, what, what, what really wonders? So the line has been crossed. What's big my mind is that this is 21st century. Mm -hmm. And we are still having to deal with these backward ideas and traditions up to now. I, dare, even among, I wouldn't dare even, it as you do. Now, I even among backwards. educated people who should know now, now, that the whole matter has changed now. Nobody belongs to the social class of the past. Mm -hmm. Even among them, there are people propagating this thing. Well, I personally would not... Because it is, the argument is, we cannot change our history or our social, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. but, 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 but then what does it do when it is becoming to be now a source of a division or a problem? 
Well, my, my point is... It should, it should be discouraged. Yeah, this shouldn't be a tradition anymore or a culture. Of, uh, this is something that used to operate in the past. As we have seen with every society, societies evolve. Yeah. You start somewhere, at some point it doesn't work anymore because it's demeaning, it's dehumanizing. Mm -hmm. You drop that and you assume something new, right. something that is progressive. This is what every society have done. What we have in our countries, uh, especially in the African society, is we leave, we, we fail to move forward. When we are moving forward, we, bring, we want to bring with us things that hold us back. When you and say we fail to move forward, what do you mean by that statement? What I mean is we want to be in the present, but we also want to live in the past mm -hmm. at the same time. Uh, for example, you have the, the present society is set up in a way that the caste system has no place in it. Mm -hmm. But we want to bring it along also. Perhaps for those people who want to do so, it makes them feel good about themselves looking at somebody else as inferior to them. Right. Maybe it's just a tradition they just want to hold on to because it serves them in a certain way. But it doesn't serve the general good of the society. It doesn't, it, it, it's, not what, it's not our experience anymore. It used to be somebody else's experience in the past, but it's no longer our experience and so we need to live it uh, in the Let's box. look at it within the broader context. Wow. Um, there has been a conflict between modernism mm -hmm and traditional system. Even when people like Nkuruma came, even Sadaura when he came, mm -hmm. he had to make an attempt to reduce the influence of traditional but institutions. That, no, but that's 50 years ago. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm coming. I, 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 am, I, am, I am actually looking at it from the existing tensions that over time happens between yes. our modern institutions and traditional institutions. Now, I agree with Nyuma. I think our society has evolved to such a stage that we have a constitution that says everyone is equal before the law. Mm -hmm. Everyone should be treated equal. equal. So, so when we get to that level, obviously the older traditional structures are obsolete. Mm -hmm. Any structure that seeks to dehumanize or makes an oh, old period. Always. But I think also that that is why for me when I am, when, even when I was doing a Facebook post and attempting to do something about it, I refused to mention an ethnic group in it and I refused to mention I refuse to write it in such a way that it makes people feel, oh, they are the people who do it, they are barbaric. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, I think that the fundamental responsibility that every Gambian has is to reach out to someone with that kind of view mm -hmm. and seek to convince them to see things the way you see them. Mm -hmm. so, the, I think the com very conflict is um, everybody really wants to maintain their cultures and traditions. Mm -hmm. Provided, of course, they are preserved to be demonstrated at cultural ceremonies or to, to show them in traditional uh, events, etc. But now, when it be, they become source of divisions, like you know, you mentioned Sadawda Jawara mm -hmm. time. When Sadawda, when the, when the, I mean, I mean the, the, the wind of political change was blowing over West Africa, and when it reached Gambia, people were claimed, clamoring for independence. Mm -hmm. Then it was the Protectorate and the colony. Yes. The colony that's Banjul and the protectorate was the provinces. Yeah. Now the people of the protectorate really who were hard on by if you like uh, at the time mm -hmm. clamored for further um, um, further legislation that will enfranchise them because they know they are in the majority. Mm -hmm. So if they are enfranchised they suddenly will win the most the most votes. They can gather the most votes against the people and from the colony. The and when they were looking for somebody, the people of the protector, they were looking for somebody. That's why you know, even now I'm disturbed about this the ethnic divisions between the people. In the, because when they, were in the, when they were looking for somebody from the protectorate, mm -hmm. and those are illiterate people, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. in 50 years ago, in 1959, yeah. 58, 59, they said, look, we are going for somebody who is from the protectorate. We don't care whether he's a Sarapole, mm -hmm. he's a Fuller, he's a Mandinka. He's a blacksmith, he's a craftsman, he was a former slave, we don't care about it. Yeah, we, in Yamala, we, in Yamala, quote unquote. We, wanted, we wanted somebody who is from the protectorate and is educated enough to lead us. So if those people, people like Sanjali Bojan, Jumbo Bojan and others... And those are of royalty. Royal, yes. Who could say, look, this system, this, how these concepts are now back, backward now, we just look for somebody who can lead us and the progress that 50 years ago yeah. today in 2018 mm -hmm. we have gone a step back 
you yeah. know, from, from, from even the enlightenment those people have in 50 years. But let's look now at the also, problem, there's a problem. The problem with and, that and is... And my fear is if people who are educated are propagating this, mm -hmm. it's going to it's certainly going to lead... You know, you know, one of the things I don't like watching some Nigerian films mm -hmm. is when I see people being sacrificed mm -hmm. for, for, political, for political purposes, they said, okay, this is, this is how it used to be. Mm -hmm. But if you are screening this, this, this 2018, I will not encourage the children who are on board of who are using to go back to it again. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem now. And people who are educated, who know better, are people, interestingly, who have hold, you know, a very entrenched position on this matter, very unprogressive views. Mm -hmm. I'm disturbed that this thing is going to really well, and now, what is the role of the state in this? But, but look at the light, maybe Nyuma will come to that, uh, the role of the state in it. But I, I, want to, um, so I want to talk about the role of the society mm -hmm. and the role of our social institutions in this kind of a conflict. Look at, look at so many progressive, quote-unquote, people we have seen, several people we have seen, who have come out and say, this thing has to stop. Mm -hmm. So many progressive people, I've seen it even on social media. Said it has to. It has stop. to stop. Yeah, there was a statement to this effect. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there are people that in this particular case. Influential members yeah. of the community had yeah, come out and say, we can't afford this. Absolutely. So this has to stop. So if you look at it from also the, the good side of it, mm -hmm. you have a lot of people who actually don't necessarily agree with this. But, but they are, are the silent majority. But there are still people. There are still we people who, of course, who will have to reach out to through conscientization to sort of explain to them that, look, the society has outlived this. This, this is, you are living a modern life. You but, are living an archaic life now in, a modern, that, in a modern world. Now that a life has been lost, allegedly in connection with the thing, what should be now? Did? Now here is the thing. Uh, I want to begin with what we consider culture and what is really happening right now. And I, I try to give you context. I mean, maybe it's not the best, but I try to give you context to how we have the commoners, the nobles, and all of these things. In the past, people had responsibilities to one another. These commoners, nobles, they don't exist in abstraction. Mm -hmm. They exist in relation to the other, other group of people, and they have responsibilities towards one another. That no longer happens. People just look at another person and say, you are a commoner, so we're going to treat you as a low person. But coming to your question in answering that, I think it's very obvious that the state has a responsibility to protect every citizen because there are laws that empower the citizens. There are in, uh, in, uh, international instruments that values the human person, that accords the human person dignity and uh, so many rights, including rights to life. Therefore, if individuals take the law into their own hands, thinking that they are superior to the other person and kill them, they have to face the law. The, the, Government, the state has a responsibility to make sure they enforce uh, the regulations that are supposed to protect the yeah, human. Yeah, we person. are no longer in the yeah. Kian kingdom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. also, yeah. as we have, as we have with FGM, we need to have also laws that regulates hurtful traditional practices and so-called cultures that dehumanizes individuals. Really. Now, was there any element of politics in this? Because I said this divisions which existed before could be manipulated, could be really exploited by politicians. Mm -hmm. Was there any political dimension that, that fueled this disturbance? Because I, I, I can't see if people have been living in this way for donkey years, mm -hmm. suddenly it becomes a problem. Everybody's entrenching their position, going behind this traditional thing. Was there any mm -hmm. element of politics? Oh. I think the grievances were there. I doubt if there were any element of pro uh, uh, politics in it. But look at the president. Because I was looking for some Look, look, look at the president. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is not... As the, place, the place where someone died was in Garawal, if I get it yeah. right. Yeah. Garawal is the biggest community. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, with, I don't like to that mention area. it. Sun, yeah. it sun so, yes. Um, so, if... But before Garawal, there was... There was it happened in A similar Diabogu, incident, yeah. yeah. In Diabogu. Mm -hmm. yeah. Before Diabogu, I think it happened in around Basse. Yeah. Okay. And these are all being reported on specifically on Foraya and Muslims. Yes, Foraya. So, so, yes, Foraya so dealt with this very significantly. Now, if you look at in all those reports, I think one thing you would have, I would have personally blamed the authorities was yeah. even where a human being, where someone died, mm -hmm. it had happened for about three days, I think. 
before anybody before died. someone died mm -hmm. like the, the tensions the sign of tensions also yes mm -hmm. the sign of tensions were always there yeah, yeah. so even though the security presence was should have been there but it wasn't not not that i know of i mean not based on the reports i've seen i was not there mm -hmm. but not there was the, there was some there were some arrests when it when when some that is after yeah death yeah. Okay. no no before the death when some yeah, that was in the when it happened in Diabo yeah. 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 but it's the same trend it's the same trend but so, this that's what I'm saying so the precedence was there yeah. like if you had seen an emergence of something yeah. mm -hmm. like everybody in Chiambo de Masati then you should be able you to get the police to you Chiang prevent Chiang the action before it happens all right all right let's move so, on then well unfortunate that this incident really little let the uh, loss of life before the authorities Unfortunately. take a firm action against it. I, I just want to say something about that because I've also seen reports where, as Mustafa said, when it happened in Diabuku, there were arrests made and apparently some, somebody from the police asked for those people to be released. And they attacked uh, the police station, I think, at some point because they felt empowered. You see, here are the people who are wrong and they're supposed to be punished immediately for doing something wrong, but you kind of through your inaction you empower them until it has a spillover effect on another community. And here is so and somebody and really and also, do also I mean Baro is the most best equipped look. I know a president we have institutions to deal with this. A president cannot deal with this. Uh, this is not the president's job. But look the president here is a community where the president belongs. Yeah. He knows he it. belongs. Mm -hmm. And I think he should take it upon himself to also address this at a level he can. I mean, he yeah. very much can. Yeah. He within could, within he could, few days, example, he can I, fix this problem. He could, for example, at the beginning of the crisis, yeah. uh, you know, drop there and... and, and Absolutely. Address, address oh, we mean, maybe we can do a this. Public, public condemnation. Yeah. So, yeah. so if, he, if he didn't do that until now, I think mm -hmm. he should still continue to... He can still Absolutely. go there can still and, and calm the tension. And say yeah, this. it's his own community. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah, think... You can relate to your own people, people in ways that yeah, other right. people can't Cannot. relate that's to. Right. And he understands the community very well. Absolutely. Yeah. Now let's move on. Um, an, an old issue really was uh, um, revived mm -hmm. in the last week. Uh, people from the office of the prosecutor, mm -hmm. the IEC, were here. Uh, they, they, they were actually here to conduct a workshop. Um, um, organized by Trust Africa in collaboration with the Dutch Embassy. Did you see ICC? ICC. Okay. International Criminal Court. Yes. And the journalists, well, actually, the journalists were introduced, that is, people who have never heard of the ICC or know of how they work. Mm -hmm. Even if you had known how they work, that workshop provided uh, the participants with insight, further insight mm -hmm. how they work. And they made themselves available to the press, and the government journalists. Mm -hmm. um, took up the challenge and asked them, asked them a question that has been in everyone's government's lip at the time. Mm -hmm. Why didn't ISIS felt necessary to at least issue a statement, a warning, or intervene mm -hmm. in the crisis in the Gambia in 2016, even and before that? Mm -hmm. And uh, the head of the International Corporation, the Office of the Prosecutor, Juan Amadi Bar, mm -hmm. Again, repeated what the prosecutor had said at the time, that um, the events that were happening in the Gambia did not meet the threshold That's to trigger mm -hmm. ICC intervention. Chiefly because, one, the reported crimes were not on a scale and scope or were not systematic policies of the government. And again, they were not getting information from many sources. All what they were getting was from the media. And it takes more than that to get IT, ICC. And what, what, what's more revealing is that, in fact, when it happened, the prosecutor set up a body mm -hmm. internally to look at the reports. Mm -hmm. And it was from that report that it would have gone to the preliminary analysis and then go to open formal investigation. Mm -hmm. But it didn't even pass the, that um, internal arrangement. So now, mm -hmm. the question now remains. Mm -hmm. And they still, they went home still, I think, tried to convince the people mm -hmm. uh, that they should have intervened on that. Mm -hmm. Do you still believe that the IC should have intervened in 2016 at the height of the political review and even before it can be unmarked? Um, 
So this is a this is not a new question. It's, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. We have had this even in my class. We have had this debate. I think what people fail to understand is that ICC is not just any national court. They have a jurisdiction, and their jurisdiction covers four crimes: crimes against humanity, war crimes, crimes of aggression, and genocide. So it's not any act of violence that will bring somebody under the jurisdiction of the ICC. So Jamie may have been accused of. Uh, human rights violations, but th th these are they as ICC would justify their lack of intervention? Are they almost enough to uh, indict Jame under any of the crimes that falls under their jurisdiction? This is the question. So uh, I remember there was a time when he made uh, when Jame made a declaration against the Mandinkas that he was going to crush them like uh, cockroaches. Uh, somebody from the that department who was responsible for genocide issues issued a warning because if he if Jame should have uh, went ahead with his threat or if something should happen based on what Jame had said he would be held responsible mm -hmm. so that was their responsibility to do but in this case i think iec had uh, uh, they had uh, icc, ICC mm -hmm. sorry icc iec <laughs> icc i think they, they they were limited in the in the sense uh, of how they could have intervened uh, in this case. Uh, I know Gambians felt that they were really ignored, uh, left, uh, uh, left alone, especially since we had the ICC, ICC prosecutor being a yes. Gambian and who used to work under J Jamez government and who would have had an insight into what Jamez atrocities w were. But I think up to this point, it's still debatable if Jamez crimes can qualify as crimes against humanity, I think. Uh, so, Mustafa? So, yeah, um, personally, I don't think I see the statement that came after mm -hmm. Jambe made that turning speech. I don't think it came from us. I think I it's from the U.S. Mm -hmm. The Senegalese gentleman who works at the U.S. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The Senegalese, um, he works around the prevention of crimes and mm -hmm. genocide and yes. something like exactly. that with the U.N. Mm -hmm. okay. So the ICC, the fact that they've been completely silent on the Gambia's case, I think that is the reason why mm -hmm. all of us mm -hmm. were not quite happy. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at the lady's excuses, mm -hmm. they were very lame, even when she was here. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is that the lady was at the ICC because Jambe was here. I mean, past because if you are if you are to have those kind of appointments too you need uh, yes, the backing of your state no but yeah, i'm coming, I know, I'm but, coming. There, but there are independent ways of choosing like yes, a person yes. has to be mm -hmm. of, a, of, of a moral and uh, repeatable character mm -hmm. i think she's she, 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 it's not just the gambia government but what of moral and repeatable character was she when she was here uh, well, yeah, she well, served as attorney general and yes, the legal and system went, under gambia has always been the same yeah. no, what, what is your point um, are you saying okay, no, 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 let's, let's, let's forget yeah. about the person as in the personality of yeah. the of the woman okay. so what but the fact that the fact that she it, said nothing it. was wrong but did you and she, she, let, let's let, let's take an example from from threats during the Niger before the Nigerian election, yes, the you know threats that have come said to have come from the, the good luck, good luck's one. Yeah, they, they, they issued a statement. ICC issued a statement because crime was about to be committed. Mm -hmm. Then there was suspicion, or at least reasonable suspicion, to believe that if this thing goes, when people in position of authority speaks, mm -hmm. and they have like there are few things that compose threat. When someone issues a threatening statement, why? Yeah. And when you, that person has the ability mm -hmm. to carry out on that, that threat, that is a threat. Yeah. Yeah. And what Jambe said was a threat, mm -hmm. and he had the ability to and the wherewithal mm -hmm. to carry out on that threat. And also, that should have raised a flag. I mean, for me but personally, my point but, is, but listen, you are about like Nima, like you, your job is to make sure that no one steals this paper. And I have a I have a history of stealing papers. No, you don't get the you point. Have reasonable suspicion. Maybe you have not the ICC, as much. The ICC you have not stolen as much papers in the past. Oh no! To, to that's not a justification. Now let's, the now let's look at it this way. The, ICC, the ICC's role is not to make sure nobody steals. The ICC's role is to make sure somebody who steals is gets punished. Yes. You get my point. Yes. The reason why when Jambe made a threat, the right institution made their declaration. Like condemning Jame's statement because and, and, it could and, and, lead and to something. That right institution is not the ICC. The ICC said before they have three methods of uh, intervening. Yeah. 
One, they have to be invited by the state parties, which, mm -hmm. is, which is quite unlikely in, Jam in, in, Jam in Jam case. case. Mm -hmm. The government would not report themselves all this time. Yeah. The second thing is when the matter is referred to them by the United Nations Security Council, Security Council. which did not happen in this case. Mm -hmm. And the third one, and that is what we come into um, play in our this circumstance, that mm -hmm. is when the prosecutor take it upon him or herself mm -hmm. in the interest of justice mm -hmm. to put her, her, his or her nose in the matter. Mm -hmm. And this is what the Gambians wanted Fatima to do. Yeah, Fatima yeah. Ben Sudan. Ben. She and her officials said, said and, and, oh. and the other thing is because they categorized, okay, there was no genocide, even though mm -hmm. we thought Yemen's threat against the Mandingos could have could have been like that. Mm -hmm. They said to, okay, they agreed that there were crimes, um, there could have been crimes mm -hmm. against humanity, mm -hmm. and that's where journalists are really telling them. Yeah. But they said, they but it's, not, it's still they debatable. They to be systematic mm -hmm. policy of the government. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, we disagree that look. But which is absurd. We, and you know every, yourself that every, is absurd. People, everybody know that torture was a system. It was they systematic. Used, you it was had widespread. said it so. Yeah. You it was had too said widespread. it. Mm -hmm. I, we told them that. Mm -hmm. So even even if you, I mean, you exclude genocide, but when it comes to crimes against humanity, you can't tell us that this was not a systematic policy of the government. It was a It was policy. a systematic Mm -hmm. policy of the now government. again when we held them that they said where were the informations com coming from because you know mm -hmm. the ICC gets information reputable even individuals can do it mm -hmm. but reputable civil society organizations etc NGOs etc human rights bodies yeah. lawyers professional bodies used to do it but in the case of the government they said it was if only coming from the press yeah and that's not enough and well, how much that. how much of that information is coming from the, tr exactly. the press? Exactly, they said it was, com it was coming from the press. Yeah, and the and the press actually took action to to check an internal arrangement to still here, mm -hmm. um, but then they were not satisfied that these things are, I mean, I mean, I mean, on a scale large enough to trigger their intervention. That's what they said. So mm -hmm. I know the. This argument will now, go on and Did go they on. explain why they, they, are, the they had forewarn orders look, and look not out? But looking at the future, there's, there's still there's still an um, it's still, there's still something, a role the IC can play. We asked them that. They said, no, we told the Gambia government at the launch of the TRRC that the prosecutor's office will be monitoring mm -hmm. and where we are asked to provide assistance, mm -hmm. we will, but only in accordance with our mandate mm -hmm. as an independent state. But what we are happy is there are now a willingness um, by the Gambia government to investigate its own crimes. So that's what they part they call complementary. They said yeah. the Gambia now has a complementary. So they, mm -hmm. they are happy with that's a very good step. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the country has returned to the IC, that's a very first step. Yeah. They will give assistance where that's they were requested. But only again mm -hmm. with the mandate and the guidelines of the IC. So mm -hmm. provided for example everything has happened here and the and the government said now we would need Jambe. We would indict Jambe for this and this thing, and we cannot do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Would the ICC come in? But they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't discuss those things until maybe in the future yeah. when something like that happens. But they said it will have to be in accordance with their mandate again. So we may have this same similar problem. Maybe this thing is not big, big enough to get us involved, or there is something here that. That's the argument. Anyway, let's move on. Okay. Um, November 11th. We all know that November 11, 400 years now, have been marked as the end of the First World War. Mm -hmm. In November um, 1994, we have our own uh, problem. Because on that day, um, the Junta um, announced that, uh, at the time, they said three soldiers, three persons, mm -hmm. lost their lives in the November 11 attempted coup, which they said was an attempted coup. But subsequently, reports have emerged that one, it wasn't even a coup. Mm -hmm. Two, it was not only three people. A lot of people were arrested and over 11 to 12 were summarily executed and their bodies were dumped at the Fajara barracks and Yundum barracks particularly. The executions happened in the forest somewhere in Brikama. This was documented by senior, very senior army officials in a book I read, coup d'etat in the Gambia by Captain, who was a captain then, Captain Samsidin, Sar, who later became deputy commander. And but who of, later said but the of book course, was a lie. But of course, <laughs> who, Jamme, dis, Jamme, said, Jamme discredited the book, said it was a lie, and, and he did not, he, he still did not uh, 
come to defend that his his uh, but Sam was, himself came to say the book was a lie. Yeah, yes, yes, something like that. He didn't he didn't count that gun. So now but most people believe that that book is the most authentic documentation of the atrocities that happened on November 11. Mm -hmm. Now, here are eyewitnesses. Somebody like Bakari, um, Bakari Dabo or something like some Dabo, who witnessed him. And he's claiming that there are people who took part in that massacre who are still in the, mm -hmm. in the story. He, they want justice. They said this at the victim center. Mm -hmm. What kind of dimension does this, or this latest development give to this saga? And obviously this is going to be the first, I think, the first thing that will come before the TRIC. Yeah, I think what this signifies is the necessity for why uh, the TRRC needs to be up and running. Uh, because so many things have happened on the Jame and so far what we get is his wars against somebody else's. I think it's important now that we have the TRRC so that all of these things become clear to the people uh, through the testaments that are going to be coming from the victims themselves or their their relatives. Um, I, I think that's that's what I have to say about it. Yeah, it signifies the importance of the TRRC. Mustafa, mm -hmm. didn't it uh, resonate with mm -hmm. feelings expressed by other victims um, that unless some people who are elected perpetrators are weeded out of the system, mm -hmm. it will be difficult to put these things in. In, in, in I was actually going to say it. something like that. Because look, when we go through what we went through, mm. there was, I mean, a lot of us said, well, finally, you know, this kind of system of governance will come to an end. Mm -hmm. And with the ending of this kind of system of governance, we were hoping that impunity would be ended. Mm. That people will never, that, that, that people will learn lessons of the past. And to learn lessons of the past is to also punish culprits of the past. Now, we have to be a responsible people. Like, when I say responsible people, I mean, when government is faced with difficult options like this, mm. it must act decisively in ways that does not signal, sends a wrong signal to people who are currently in position of power. Like if you have seen someone who has killed someone's relative, mm -hmm. and this person is still in position of authority, yes. that system changes. This person still enjoys the same rights, same benefits he enjoyed when he was killing a helpless citizen. Mm -hmm. What are you telling the victims? You are telling them that you are not relevant. Anyone can just come kill you, and then the following day we said we are equal people, we are fine people, we forgive. But can the authorities said, well, some process has to be followed that will really authentically uh, um, identify okay. these people M to may be I the actual something. perpetrators, yeah, but and this is probably what they are waiting. Because but what do you do when you are investigating a civil servant? Do you leave them in a in, in a place or do you suspend them? You suspend if them. they are named to be. But then, but if they are named to be, yeah, but there are, are people. But, but there are Babali. But, but Babali, yes. Babali claim he went to an event. I can't independently I verify this. But Babali claim he went to an event. Yes. At Kailaba. Yes, and, and he saw he met a security who officer him who tortured and told him. him. Mm -hmm. He told him that. And he I told him. him. Yes. But and he, he had the courage to approach him and sick hand with him. Yes, but now. But and now, yet we are okay, but we now, are not a part. Somebody can argue. Babali is not a law unto himself, he's not a policeman, he's yeah. not a distinct. Um, that is a laid down process where, according to the government, this will happen, and that's the act that established the TRRC. Now, the TRRC said that if anybody is mentioned to be an alleged perpetrator, whether you are in office or not, you will be asked to come. If you don't come, you will be... So they have that if you don't power. Do, they have you will be arrested. Commissions have powers equal to high now, court. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps we can say this is the moment that the authorities also go to are waiting. Because obviously they can claim that we don't have authority now to jump on Mustafa and say, Lavin Cham said you are the one who told you. Hallelujah. But evidence before the commission has already told us, shown us, yeah, but that, go, that but wouldn't what, happen. But what evidence? May I, the commission may I say of something? the other commission, the economic one. The economic yeah. one? 
No, but they have not yet concluded. They have, I mean, they have, they have, they have not reported. They have not reported They didn't yet. say anybody has done anything. Now, here, here is the I thing. Think, I think it's definitely very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's not only in the Gambia, even in other places. You find people, I mean, Idris Deby, Idris Deby who was the chief, was the chief commander of his and Harry. Alan Johnson Saleh. No, his and Harry. I mean, the current president of Chad was the commander of his and Harry. I mean, when, when, when the ICC become investigating his and Harry, I mean, Deby was in control. Deby said, okay, we will take part, but I'm not going to testify. And others before we who took part in this did not testify. I so mean, you always have people who are still serving and they are allied perpetrators. Now, here is the thing. I think it's, it's not going to be fair if we expect too much from uh, this government, as some of us do. Now, the government has put up a process. As you said, there should be a process. The process is the TRRC. Yeah. The TRRC hasn't actively started their work yet. Now, if people get implicated as being perpetrators of crimes and they get accused, obviously our law says somebody is innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, if they are not going to be prosecuted, now the government needs to be strategic in who to lay off and who not to lay off mm -hmm. from their work. Now we're talking about security personnel. How many of those have been accused? How many of those has expertise uh, in, in security matters? Now if you're going to suspend those people and they're not going to be arrested, what could they do? And then, like, and, and, there's a question of what could they do, especially if the numbers don't are there. Take, don't you, you are not arresting anyone. That's what I'm saying. Really? If you're not arresting they, them, you are laying them off. Obviously, no, they you know are that. Not laying them off. Suspended. You are suspending them. You are suspending yeah, on, them. On whose, on whose, or what legal, what process? Yeah. The problem is. Yeah, because who's not came to me? Now, I, I would agree with wait. suspension yes. where evidence is concerned. And here is where we are talking about. Now, yeah. we are talking about suspension of those whom you have reasonable suspicion after some or process. after some process but yes. that process is after reports have been after these people have said reported them you have victims who have reported people okay hmm. listen. you understand okay listen. now if victims listen, have reported let's let's now, let's now come listen. because this is very crucial for evidence protection okay now and when you are talking of transitional justice one of the most crucial things we will be dealing with let's is trust. That is what I am saying. But, this but also, mm -hmm. aside from that, we will also be dealing with is of evidence. Mm -hmm. Because evidence ought to be protected mm -hmm. for us to reach to justice. Mm -hmm. Because you can't, you can't prosecute me if I am the guardian of the evidence that is going to implicate me. How yeah. are you going to find? I will destroy it, man. Of course. Nah. So this is what I'm talking about. So for me, that, that is that is that is the dilemma the government faced. Yes, I know they, they have, have no easy decision to make. But at some point, the NI nine case a classical example. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the the, the uh, I mean, the, the Ministry of Justice have, have many times said that they are not actually. But there prepared. is no willingness in the but, Ministry of Justice okay. to also try that case. They said they are they are not prepared. Mm -hmm. They don't have the way of tell us to go through this rigorous uh, legal, um, I mean, challenges such as somebody yeah. determining whether this exhumed body is the person who actually that etc. They said those those are that case is still pending, is it? Now, if, if it is not a good example that if you try to bump on people who who are just accused by people in the street, you may terribly make a mistake. I am not saying. I, look, so it's look, the TRRC no, process. No. I think is it not fair to say that after the TRRC process? Then of course all the victims would now have reason to hold the government at the neck for not taking action because they have now known through a process who are the alleged perpetrators. No, my, that's no, not after all, after that's all. not that's not after, after, after all. Do you know that a lot of people are, no, no. are wanted by the police? Yes, I know that. At least from, 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 from not from the that's from, from the jungles. That's from the reports. No, from the jungles. Yes, yes. what? Yeah, but from also, the junglers. Let me let me say this. Mm -hmm. I think we were faced with two options, yeah. and we chose transitional justice. Mm -hmm. I would have I would have actually argued prosecution if we had if we had not chose. No, that it's not a choice between prosecution and TRRC. No, 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 Both saying, can happen. I'm saying judicial justice before TRR, without TRRC, like creating a special court to deal with a crime and forget about TRRC. Okay. So I'm saying these were the two options. In my opinion, Thanks. we were faced with. Now we chose the TRRC and, and say TRRC, which, which yes, is in both faults, which exposes crime at the same time and source prosecution at the end. Now you say recommends, recommends, yeah, recommends prosecution, prosecution recommends. at the end. So, but what I am saying is that in that kind of a situation, to avoid uh, what uh, I forget the author, privatization of justice, mm -hmm. like for instance, if I believe and know 
that Nyuma killed my father. Mm -hmm. And because there is justice delay, I get angry and go hack Nyuma. I yeah. hope you death. don't. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I hope I don't do that. <laughs> so, okay. so, but I'm saying, like, this is what causes that. This is what causes people to privatize, like, the, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so what you are basically saying, that that's what the argument, people have argued that, that did we need a TRRC or a special code to expedite these things and finish? I think the TRRC idea is perfect. It's fine. Yeah. But suspend but some people who are known to have been involved in major... How major are they process. known to have been involved? Oh, suspected from, from, or reported to have been involved in major... From, from, the complaints, from the complaints of the people. And protect uh, yeah, evidence. You must have to find a way of seeing whose claim is authentic. And whose claim is not a Now, here is the thing. The TRRC is not going to stop any judicial proceedings. Prosecutions can still happen. If private individuals feel that there are people who torture them and they can recognize it, these people, they can take them to the court and it will be valid. Absolutely. You get my That's point. But this the government also have has... Legal support to do this new they may not have the legal support. But my point is, the, the government There's is... There's no doubt that yeah. it is going to be very, very challenging if you have people who are accused of being perpetrators within the system. There is, there is a likelihood that they will try to destroy evidence. That is what I am saying. That is true. They can guess a general problem. Even you, your own it's special case, I and some people are I still... I perfectly. Uh, but the thing is, people, who, or government will call, always say that we must have a process to be able to tie these people to these crimes they are alleged to have done. And that process we have now is the TRRC. And, on, and, and the TRRC said, anybody who is mentioned, Mm -hmm. Whether you are serving or not, you will be asked to come. If you don't come, you will be arrested to come. And if that happens, then of course the government will have information that well, this man, this man, this man, this man is elected to have done, then we will suspend him or put him before trial at that time. They can argue that that's the problem. But the delay in this thing, is, I can imagine, is very frustrating to the victims. No, it's frustrating. Very frustrating and in, in fact cast a doubt on the willingness of the government now. Mm -hmm. That is to, what to, I am to really And that is dangerous. Yes. He, yes. He, he yes. was doing this. I that. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what I am saying. So, you know, that's, that, that's, that's my point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, moving on. Yes, moving on. And um, There was a small matter um, today. We have an international football match. Uh, Benin versus the Gambia. Hmm. in a couple of hours. Um, seriously, um, there's no great chance for the Gambia, hmm. actually, whatever the outcome of this might. Um, because we, we have, we, we've now lost uh, control of our own destiny in this thing. Much of it depends on what happens in other fixtures, even hmm. though we've been here. And then our, our protests against Togo. I mean, the gloss is taken out of our campaign, but the boys are still going to play against Benin. They are two points. And you are going Togo there. is five points. Mm. Algeria and Benin are seven points each, and only two will go. Algeria is playing Togo in Lome tomorrow, and the Gambia is playing Benin here um, today, this afternoon. Benin has seven points, I guess Algeria seven points. Togo five, Gambia two. So how many points so, do the Gambia need? Well, at the moment, we'll take at least nine points. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and we have only and one match impossible. to go. Wow. We have only one match to go. And we are hoping, of course, the protest against Togo will give us three. If they Why really are we hoping. always hoping? No, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> so, um, that, is, that, is, that is the matter before us now. Um, mm -hmm. We have to be patriotic and still go and support this country. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> 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 but that's the scenario. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I'm not when that are we going I'm to qualify? That kind of patriotism. I mean, man, let's let's fix our football. Mm. For me personally, I mean, look at the exuberance in these tournaments the that super we, yeah. we, we do here. Yeah, rather the zonals. Yeah, the zonals. Like tomorrow's mm -hmm. match, yeah. tomorrow's final will be. Think about it. It's more well anticipated than this one. Think about is. us. Mm -hmm. Think about us. Forget this. FIFA, little FIFA subventions we are getting on daily, daily, on these petty, petty footballs that we go every year, ala la <laughs> far. So, but think about it. Now, when we come and invest, close our doors, mm -hmm. focus on our football for five years, yes. opt out of all competitions, yes. focus on developing our young stars. Yes. Huh? Gambians have, look, this Charles, is... if you go to every football field in this country, mm -hmm. at three to five, 
people it's are there. packed. Yeah. People have the passion for football people, in this country, but people, it can't function. People of the Gambia has a voracious appetite for football. Absolutely. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. the local game is not enough to feed that or exciting to feed that. So yeah. they get fed from international Absolutely. games. That's why everybody is going to video clubs, etc., mm -hmm. etc., yeah. et and dying, cancelling marriage programs. And, Doing appointments Absolutely. just to watch international, just to watch international yes. games. We what it takes, it. what it takes is we still don't have the people who are courageous leaders who will scrap this leak we have yeah. and force everybody interested in running clubs to identify themselves with communities. Communities. Absolutely. If, for example, Wally and Oriel de Benyul wants to run a team, I would say go to Good Foods mm -hmm. or go to Brikama. <clears throat> All right, sit with them. Proportional percentages as to what, uh, what will be your percentage if you mm -hmm. are the investor. Mm -hmm. The community's uh, share is this. Mm -hmm. You come together. When real comes to play, we see hundreds of thousands of people. And the country will be big. That's the way you can get people to uh, identify with their communities and formulate the league along those lines. Your divisional games. But do as long well as we don't have courageous sports minister mm -hmm. and sports leaders in government, who will take that bold step? Yeah. We don't go anywhere. Yeah. And it's not this minister or the ones no, before no, him no, no, who no. want to take that. No, so we no, need a complete, that. a complete brand new set of leaders who mm. are courageous and bold enough to take that step. I mean, if you withdraw us from the game, what what difference does it make if you withdraw us from FIFA? Yeah. Because even if we are no no there, yes. we are just wasting money. Yes, absolutely. So we I mean, need, has been it, we need an inspiring leadership. Good sports policy mm -hmm. to be forwarded by a government that's ready mm -hmm. to take you know things in the hand. We don't have that. Yeah, we don't have it in the past. We don't have it now. Yeah. That's so what for me. For me personally, uh, I think you know some of these things. People must be ready to take certain radical measures. That I is what we don't have. Start boycotting. That is what we all matters. Exactly. But if they invite, if they invite any country in this country, every no one goes. <laughs> okay. I mean, um, it, no, but it's good. You know what? You know what? So what, what, is what, is a, what makes it painful? Of how FIFA is bringing two hundred and fifty million dollars every four years. Think about it. Into the Gambia, and it goes where? every four years two hundred and fifty million dollars. And it goes where? But it's, and it's, it's, it's not, not reflected reflected for Gambia's participation in international matches. It has not reflected in the quality or ability or qualification of our of our team into the competitions. We that don't matters. even have pitches. All right. So, no. so now, where are we going? And the issue of the issue of also the judicious financial management, fiscal management in GRF. You have seen that the that gold that project. That. That's another allegations of uh, uh, gold project. Even expenses. national assembly so we, committee. So we need sport. a serious government and a serious sports minister who will take bold steps. And you are not saying a serious and, and, really, and really formulate policies. And not side with people who, you know, or this side or this side. Yeah. Uh, just come with them, and then that will serve the country. As long as we don't have that, we will all go to I think this kind of matches. So it's just I, purely I, academic. I, I blame the sports That's journalists as well. I mean, no, yeah, don't they? No, no, no. no. I, I, I follow yeah, the people like you. You've done amazing work. But if you look at sports journalists in this country also, I mean, they've not followed the money enough. I mean, Think about the kind of money, resources that comes into our football. Where does it go? Like so if you are telling me, if you are asking me, there's and, uh, and but projects if you, that. That is what I am saying. Now, if you tell me 250 million goals comes into Gambian football, yeah, I guess four years, years, the, only, million the, million the, the artificial turf we have at this place is built by FIFA, or FIFA project. Yes. The one at Brikama also FIFA project. Yes. Now, what do we build out of that 250 million? It should be. In fact, some of these 250 million should be sourced through projects such as building infrastructures, uh, how to we put around the fields. country, organizing uh, um, foot, uh, youth leagues, organizing how to call it um, women football, etc., etc., and drawing up some projects, etc., etc. Now, the thing is, all these things should have resulted and affected impactly in the success of our game. But all he has, has joined right, the so you know, you know we need to move beyond this. Yeah. Anyway. When you that's, guys that's, start talking about football, it we, becomes we a guy's day, thing. Yes. Yeah. All right. Joy, uh, um, the show is yours now. The papers are... The papers <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Lam and Cham. It was quite insightful and very educative as well. But we'll take a short commercial break watching the Entrepreneur of the Week and we'll be right back. 
I am Ibrahim Ajeng, uh, born in Kanifing, born and raised in the Gambia, and also schooled in the Gambia, um, carrying the business of real estate investment. We are currently managing uh, different projects in strategic locations. One of our projects is at Gunju Sefo Coastal Highway. Uh, we consist of almost 700 plots. And the other project is in, uh, at the Tujering Seafront Estate. We also have another project at the uh, Sanyang Seaview. We, 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 you know, I mean, some of the projects, we, we even have projects that are not in the market because we focus on one single estate at a time. Because you cannot develop all the estates at the time. At the, at the same time. And you promise the customers, you're selling them the lands that are developed. And you're doing the land sales and the developments also. So we cannot do all at the, 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 the same time. Even though that favors us to do all because we'll sell more, but we are focused on satisfying our customers. So, I mean, we, we focus on the one or two estates at a time. Design it, uh, develop it, put it in the market, then focus on another estate after the developments. So we have currently ongoing projects, and we also have, in the next few days, we will announce our new projects. We have new projects of building uh, sample houses in almost all our estates to raise the development. So instead of the estate developing itself or taking t 10 years to develop, within a year, people can start living in the estates. What inspired me was uh, I've been doing business for a while. So I was managing uh, some of my mom's properties in the past couple of years. And I saw the issues people were going through and real estate and other property businesses. So I was, uh, I woke up a day and I, I woke up and I was like, uh, why shouldn't I start something to suit these problems? So that's when I started the real estate business. I learned that when I was doing the real estate business before, I learned that people had issues with uh, their land documents and land developments. And I came and different because uh, for us, we, we are more of a property investment company. Instead of just doing land sales, we involve in also land development. So uh, we look at a settlement where no one is living. We look at a settlement that uh, instead of us going to places that are already people are already living in. We focus more on creating settlements than just land sales. Some of the challenges in order to provide uh, safety and security to our customers, we make sure that before we put a particular estate in the market, we take it's time consuming because we take our time designing and uh, doing the necessary verifications and uh, documentations in order so that the uh, uh, our customers will be in a safe and secure investment. In the next five years, what we want is to provide affordable homes to almost every Gambian. Because we don't just focus on uh, the selling the land, we focus on suiting the customers also. I mean, and we want almost every Gambian to, uh, to be able to afford houses and homes. So for the, in the next five years, I see myself providing uh, affordable homes to almost every Gambia. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Seaview Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325-9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property. Dreaming of owning a property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood? EJ Investments Sanyang Seaview Estate is the best choice you have been waiting for. Our Sanyang Seaview Estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hop of Busubi roundabout and into the heart of nature where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family. You can buy a finished four bedroom story with five year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two year payment plan option. With over 300 homes, you will enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage, modern electrification with solar street lights, gated entrance with security post, and a breath-catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Sea View Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325-9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property. 
Welcome back after that um, video on entrepreneurship and you know uh, why we always bring such video is to encourage youngsters out there to take up entrepreneurship as a source of employment. Uh, moving forward, Nima Sata will take us through what have been trending on social media. Nima, what, what do you have for us? Uh, so a few things have been trending on social media. One of them we've already talked about it was the caste system thing that led to murder in Karawa. Uh, what else has been trending it concerns the social security staff who have resumed strike mm -hmm. uh, after they have allegedly sent a letter to the office of the president informing him to that effect. Mm -hmm. uh, what else has been trending was... Uh, um, a press release that has been circulating on social media on best uh, water. bottled water being contaminated and being recalled. Uh, so I think what next we're going to talk about is, this, is the social security saga. This has been a, a long ongoing thing that concerns everybody in the nation because it affects mostly the adult population of the Gambia. Uh, previously, we learned that the MD has been suspended pending investigations, and now after the investigations report were out, the president recommended that he be reinstated and some people be punished, and that has taken effect. Uh, we learned that Mumodu Kamara, who was the leader of the striking staff and also their board member, representative, board representative, has been given his termination letter uh, as recommended by the president. And so on social media, what we see is mostly support for manjang and condemnation of the staff. I don't know if that reflect the general uh, uh, feelings of the entire nation, but mm -hmm. obviously what we see on social media is that social security staff need to be punished. I'm very interested in the social security staff. Yeah. Um, do you think it's a good move? Mm -hmm. um, terminating the contract of um, one of the head of the uh, the uh, board protest. representative mm. well i wouldn't say if it's a good thing or it's a bad thing i think our concern here is whether uh, the recommendations by the president in the first place were uh, good enough uh, if it was my decision and i mentioned this here before because i saw this coming there is going to be uh, i don't know the staff would react uh, in a negative way to those recommendations as they should or as we would expect they would because they have the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, also because it was an industrial strike so obviously they expected some sort of negotiations to happen and there should have been a trade-off. You give away some things and accept uh, some other things. But in this case from their perspective, from their point of view, I think they see it as more uh, a punishment of the actions that they have undertaken and they have vindicated uh, uh, Manjang. So in our local language, I think what they are doing is, uh, I don't know, market bio, right? Now, um, in my view, and in view of the, the recent development, I think that uh, the restoration of uh, Manjang back to this place seem not to have totally resolved this matter. Because I believe that the social security staff are hell bent mm -hmm. on getting Jamme, uh, Manjang out of oh, this. They don't want to work with them. And anyone. no amount, there, there seem to be too many more to come out among them. Mm -hmm. So it is not the uh, determination of more to come out. From what I've seen mm -hmm. and you know, listening to them, mm -hmm. uh, that will bring an end to this crisis. Mm -hmm. There are always going to be a more to come out after this one. There's, yeah. there's now a Keba Ture. Yeah. And there will be more Keba tourists coming. I have all, I've said this before. Mm -hmm. If this Moro Kamal, the head mm -hmm. of the staff in the board, mm -hmm. is definitely who's claiming to be speaking on behalf of about 200 people, mm -hmm. if this is true, mm -hmm. then there has to be a holistic approach to this and not just to remove Moro Kamal because there will be always who will, who will come there. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they are right in determining who should be their MD mm -hmm. is, is, is definitely completely different matter now. Yeah. But now, the dilemma is, what is Baro going to do now with these 200 people? If they claim mm -hmm. that, you know, on the hook or crack, they are going to hold on to Mungu Kamara's position. Mm -hmm. now here what is he going to do? Mustafa suggested last time, mm -hmm. get both Kamara and Manjang out. Oh. Get all the people. They both are the person. Yeah. And what for him to go? Mm -hmm. Now, this will 
definitely appear to yield to the demands of the staff. Yeah. And the government is not but really keen. But some of the staff also go. Yes, but the government is not keen on. The government is not keen on that. Seeming to be weak and backtracking on the issue. And this, this is my and now, problem. And now the dilemma they face is, um, I mean, we come, we come back to square one. So, you see, the, the thing that Manja has also been peddling mm -hmm. was that that he brought a lot of benefits to social security in terms of his austerity has paid off. But also, let's look at social security before and now. Social security before, it's not that it was not making tone of us. Mm -hmm. In some, in in most instances, in some instances, it's because of course, it's mostly as a result of abuse mm -hmm. from central authorities, yes, particularly yes, Jamaican and his people. Yes. And now that money is not being taken, taken. what do you expect? Yeah, and you expect that the company does well, right? And the staff is saying now, that so it was not them who were taking the money or yeah. who were uh, complicit in taking the money. Yeah, they but have been forced to take the money by Jamaican and etc. etc. Personally, I now if they have not been hardworking. Would all this realization, all the, all this, look, I mean, social security have been, you know, bailing out virtually almost all government institutions, institutions like Navek and other things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they don't have. The thing about them is they don't have, they don't have to invest or have a lot of uh, how to. But they are rich. No, yeah, they don't have a lot of uh, expenditures to mm -hmm. maintain them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just collect and back. Yeah. Whereas Navek has to invest on machinery, um, merchandise, and machinery, staff, etc. etc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why they could afford that kind of loan portfolio that's unimaginable mm -hmm. uh, anywhere else in, in, in the in the, in yeah, the but world. That, that. But now, now, now listen now. What we have seen over the years is Jame has used the social service milk and pot. And he used it to blackmail, uh, sorry, to, to black, um, I mean, to bail out institutions. Mm -hmm. whose poor performance or poor output would bring him embarrassment. For mm -hmm. example, if now he has a problem, he'll go there and pick money and solve the network problem. Mm -hmm. Because if, as far as he's concerned, if now he fails, it's, it's he who failed. Yeah. So it doesn't matter where the money comes from. That has really troubled social security. I mean, we know they, were, they have a lot of money, they were the richest. Mm -hmm. What was unbearable was that the people who contribute this money would retire and it took them ages to get their money. Mm -hmm. And even if they get the money, it wouldn't be quarter of, enough, yeah. quarter of the loan portfolio given to a junior staff or senior staff. Yeah, but so that staff. is where also that is where all, all this the genuineness is. the genuineness of the staff protest comes. Yes, the right. staff don't seem to be protesting for anyone or for the institution. They were protesting for themselves. Is that, is that wrong? That is not natural but that, but because what was happening at social wrong. security so was now, wrong. Now, now listen. In terms of staff loan, now listen. Now what have happened at social security at that time? Now, now, we have, have, now we have an issue now. Okay. How do governments solve this problem? Sack all 200 people and replace them with other people. That now. is not possible. No. That, I mean, if you don't, that is destroying the institution. Now, here is the thing. Let me tell you. Something. Now it's, uh, Let me tell you. Something. You know what we have done? We have I mean, sensationalized this problem on social media. And it seems that as always, Barrow is taking his cues from the social media. Mm -hmm. Because majority of those social media loyalists to uh, MD Manjang and all those people who are lobbying for his behalf are the people, it seems, that Barrow is listening to. And they are the people he's trying to please. Now, this because this is not a prudent you decision you would make. You have 200 people you have who are trying to bargain. I mean, it's actually be 200 new well, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, close to 200. Yeah, I mean, the, the number is it's more than 100. Like, here's the thing. Manjang is not so special like he is not extraordinarily special right even if he has been vindicated by this uh the way you deal with this situation is moving somewhere else punishing people you want to punish at least these people feel that they have lost something but also they have gained something my position my is he should go that has been always been my point yeah. but but my, now, my, my point the point i'm trying to prove is yeah. that let's be careful about this 271 that the staff are selling to us mm. the staffs have proven guilty of inflating figures no even ombudsman said this but th th that may be the truth even the, even the that may be the truth like, like, no, 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 i just want to ask you a question i just want to ask you a question apart, f apart from those we know to be on strike mm. who are the other people from the social security who are in favor of manjang where are they now with social security it's 300 i think and 40 altogether yeah staff but how comes they are not coming out to speak on behalf of course, of they are there. You, you've not been there. I've been to Social Security three times during this 
Kabogo. Short period. And I've spoken, there are a lot of people inside that building that are also so in Kenya. You know what I mean? Of course. You know, but it's not, it's not that out there for people to see. Because they are not the ones on trial in the public. You know what I want to drive That is why they are not How do we solve the present problem? Now, here is my cue. Yes. Me. Manjang is not a saint. He violated several rules. In fact, he disrespected presidential order. Manjang should not have traveled for 10 days. But we, we, yeah. we, we, so we, Manjang will so go. So Manjang, according to me, should be taken to somewhere. Yes. Manjang will go. According to me, as well. And orders will be sacked. Mm -hmm. The camera will be sacked. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the sack. Absolutely. So you, you think Manjang will go. You think all camera will be sacked. You think certain that staff who have taken certain drastic measures will also go. So you are taking, you are, you are now saying that if Manjang goes mm. and the staff who took the matter, who will go acted in in an indisciplined manner, mm. be punished. Who have exactly. violated the service according to their crimes. Let's also not you forget think, that this is this is a service. This yeah. is not like journalism union. Yeah, we are not a trade union. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. So if the, if those go, mm -hmm. the problem will be solved. That's correct. Well, what it does it, you know, it may not be solved entirely, but, but, but it's a starting point. In December 2016, yes, but this is what I'm saying. Yeah, they'll go back to work, yes, and a new manager will take over. I don't, I don't think know. so. Sorry, that, that's, that's, that's your view. That's My that's, view is that's, that's look, Barrow is the one who carries the mandate of the Gambian people to make reasonable decisions on their behalf. Look, this is the truth. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, it's that if that Barrow makes that reasonable decision and said i am saying manjang goes and camera goes and some of the staffs goes and this is based on reason mm -hmm. what are you going to do but if you if you do that you i think that's, 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 that's the acceptable solution i think so that. no? Mustafa, that's the acceptable that. solution no, 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 no we're trying to bargain here my yes. point is we're trying to yes. bargain yes. you cannot take yes. everything away from people yes. and you yes. expect yes. them to sit yes. and be happy with it the position of the, from what I have said, mm. the position of the staff mm. is for Manjang to go. Yes, that's the, that's the that's the that's the most important demands I have seen. But in the claim. process, now listen, mm -hmm. they are not saying that certain conditions should be met, certain conditions should be met, or mm -hmm. certain conditions. They just because there are no conditions to meet. They just don't want uh, Manjang. Yeah. Yes. I will take Manjang. You know, already, I think Baro should look at this like an issue not like as a person mm -hmm. because manjang is absolutely a distraction here mm -hmm. because when you are looking at manjang you are looking at an individual manjang is talking about an agenda right mm -hmm. and his manjang is not doing what he's doing out of uh, in a vacuum he is doing it because this is a recommendation of an audit report all the staff reforms that all the reforms that manjang is talking about cutting expenditure here and there it's in an audit report now bring someone. How about Mr. Lamin Chang to come and do those, to come and implement those same findings, now, and then them can go somewhere. Now listen. What, uh, about, what, what do you say to the views of people who are saying that this is an open defiance of governments, which should not be encouraged because others can take cue from it and openly defy government? That's how it is. No, let, let me tell you. Industrial so actions are accepted. Mass fear mongering. You this is the problem. Yeah, I mean. I mean, uh, if they handle the social security this way by, by backing down to the demand of the staff and rescinding manjang stabilization, I mean, Gantel and other places can get up today and say, we don't want that one. <coughs> Nima, do you agree? Can, what would they do in that case? Remove that man. Too. Can I take, yeah, can I take, take control over my session? Yeah. Can I take control yeah, over my yeah, session? Yeah, okay, control. thank you very much. Now, here's the thing. Um, what you are saying, this is exactly the reason why the president does what he does. Yeah that this has been a trend, it has been happening, we need to put a stop to it. You cannot put a stop to industrial action. It's going to happen. It's a democratic thing to do. You get my point? Now, if people are in a situation like this, obviously they are trying to bargain. The reason why they come out in the first place and make demands is because they want to bargain. When you are bargaining, you don't want to get everything 100%. You expect that there is going to be a give and take. Their give is that some of them should be sat. But what they take in return is that the person they don't want to work with should be moved somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You do that, we move ahead. It's a starting point. It may not necessarily solve everything, mm -hmm. but it is a starting point. But there are laid down rules. Honorable, you were talking about fear. Mm -hmm. Like if Barrow Barge, he is not actually saying, he's not actually agreeing to everything the staff said. In fact, there is nothing more, dis they, there is nothing dishonorable about agreeing to what staff recommends mm -hmm. look we know 
Malian traveled for 10 days. We know all the podium things, the student, the guy, lady who went, and he came and justified them. That, that, that's fine. Yeah. But what I am saying is that by doing those things, he has violated. And you can tell me Nobody. that he is the only person who can, who do, can do that reform that he is doing. That's exactly. what I'm saying. Yeah. So based on that, mm -hmm. what Barrow should do, in my opinion, is to have a little bit of conscience and say, look, Mr. Manja is going. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kamara, because he was not measured in his response and in his conduct, Violated and he has everything. violated almost all the, all the laid down. That's what I am process. saying. Yeah. Because of that, he is going, mm -hmm. and all those who have been seen to be involved mm -hmm. in that activity Good. with him mm -hmm. are also going to go. Okay. So yeah, that's right. what so, And that is what you know. I call. The commander in chief acting. Now, what do we? Why, where does this leave Mr. Manja himself as an individual? If you are in his position with all this, um, with all these distractions and things, I like would that, have resigned. Mm -hmm. I would have yeah. resigned a long time ago. I mean, well, I, I don't even moved. see why he's so. I would have resigned. Or oh, have to be moved ago. somewhere. Else. Resign yeah. maybe. Uh, I very can't take this what thing kind of thing. What do you think? What do you think is keeping him? And also on his own side. Defante. On his own yeah. side. Defante. No, uh, no, yeah. I think he needs well, to he needs to go. Oh, yeah. Don't you think that both Barrow, all um, uh, all three of them, Barrow, Manjan, and the and the and the protesting staff are mm -hmm. all coming under pressure for some people who behind them? Of course, yes, there are camps here. But camps. look, let let's also be clear that Manjang is the one who gets the backing of the pens, most of these pensioner guys mm -hmm. who have met. I mean, I was at their meeting, and you know, they seem to be they seem to buy into Manjang's reform, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, you can get a consensus here. You can get someone they can all agree on. And also, why was Social Security internal documents that are not implicating Manjang but others coming out in social media, mm -hmm. and often with people who are also supporting Manjang, who is sharing those documents? Mm -hmm. Now. How would how would someone at a senior managerial person? I'm not saying Manjang is sharing them, mm -hmm. but we have seen people who are also supporting Manjang's document to be sharing internal documents implicating certain people, yeah. mm -hmm. not just the so people, not the, a lot of these managers are who have passed. Are and this there, okay. there, is, there is something called peer grade. Okay, like now, you you, now you get to have certain level to have access to certain documents. Mm -hmm. So we we know so this senior so managerial. So we take it we take it that. The whole of this social security saga has now degenerated in the sort of unprofessional manner. But it reveals that, 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 that the best thing is to clean everybody. Everyone. Manjang and no, that's, that's not possible. That's I mean, we, we can say that that's it's not point. possible. That's one point. No. And now, with Barrow under pressure from some people who, mm -hmm. who might consider him weak and, and who might think that uh, handling the way he did is the best way, mm -hmm. and social stories who staff who have some supporters and sympathizers, etc. Who do you think has the key to solve this problem? Mending as individual quitting and said, I live on my own accord, would that not solve the problem? The president would that seem to be would that yielding to the demand of the protesters. What do you think? And what will be wrong with that? The president can solve this, it's very simple move Mending somewhere else. Punish the people you consider to be punished. Let's move it's on. Always been what is happening is so unnecessary. Okay. Right? So, so we're moving that's on. The solution. We move yeah. On. Mm. Uh, I think the next thing we're going to talk about, we've talked about the caste system. What else is trending on social media is uh, the press release that have been circulated by, uh, is it Quality Assurance uh, on the best water? Uh, Have it been this is not from contaminated? Ah, no. no. It's not from best. Ah, okay. Yeah, but how far do you think this information have reached the society? Do you think it's enough that they have released something like a letter and it's just circulating? Some people may take it seriously, others may not. Uh, I also know that it might have been on QTV. I haven't watched it myself. Yeah, but I, I saw it. On yes. But shouldn't it be on all the radios? It should be everywhere. People should be hearing about it all the time. Because it's it's a health risk, isn't it? I can tell you as 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 recent as last night, I saw best, mm -hmm. but we've been sold at a, a petrol station in Costa Rica where I stopped to get some drinks. Mm -hmm. I I asked for water and he brought with the best. <laughs> said, Didn't you hear the announcement? Put this aside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, now the, the problem would be 
that this is going to affect not just pest, mm -hmm. but even the others. Because yeah, 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 yeah. People, yeah. people will no longer trust, trust water bottle. Which one is pest and which yeah. one is or natural water. Which one is. Yeah. So they will also find the, and it, this it, thing. It, it the will wreck thing. best for good. Abs mm -hmm. No, best will be will gone. Wreck them. But it will affect others because people will start having the two minds about, oh, should I even drink this when it is? Look at it from a but, but do you think the, 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 the institution concerns should be more at, proactive than they, are already, than they already are? I am thinking perhaps they should compel the company to recall all of their product from yeah. all the, the, the distributing points. Absolutely. What what the, what the, what absolutely. I'm not seeing that. What the president mm -hmm. didn't say is what sort of contamination happened yeah, and what effect could what it have? Yeah. Yes, and what, why, what makes it happen? It fell short in I don't think, according to the press, I don't think they have confirmed. I think it's based on suspicions because... No, but they came an official it, letter from the, what do they call them, Food Security uh, yeah, Safety, and quality, safety. Food quality, safety and quality Control Authority. Well, yeah, personally, they, I've, this has I've come had from experience never, But they didn't say what sort of contact. Yes, there. they didn't say. They and didn't what say. sort of health risks? I think, I think the releases may have been. No. They release say it poses some contaminants. Uh, serious risk to our health. To our health. Yeah. So right. it's so a, more proactivity needs to be done. More yeah. so information it's, it's should a, be given. A, you know, I, I, I interestingly I see in places like Britain and other places they are encouraging people mm -hmm. to stop drinking this, uh, thinking that these bottled waters are the safest, and drink water from running from their own taps in the houses. That that was more. Actually, more hygienic than this. Yeah, but in case you is, know, if we have that, you know, it's more, like, more lively. Can we go this is, this is a bottle of water? <laughs> you can't rely on, on the. Can't we rely on Navek? What is supply? That's supply that's. Navek? This is why I'm going to go with this info. This is unrelated, I know, but how trustworthy is Navek itself? Well, well, as far as we know, we. we the water is treated according to it's very treated high standards. Standards. I mean, yeah, yeah. Very but because when I hear when I hear stories about network facilities being vandalized and attacked, I'm like, if some people have easy access to these facilities, how safe are we? So what I could have been? I think the water treatment plants are, co are, co are, are completely safe, and they are, and and they they really employ best practice to make sure that the water definitely is free from contaminants. That one is secured very well. I had in fact bizarre stories that in the past I don't know. Some people, you know, well, this, this is really a wild, wild allegation that some people have been paid or asked to go and put something in the tanks mm. for people to drink. Have you ever heard that? Uh, it's my first time. etc. It, it was just so, yeah. so, 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 so wild so allegations me, happened. Me, my initial yeah. reaction when I saw it was, um, let me read this portion. Mm -hmm. um, it says, the public is hereby informed that the best bottled water might Mm -hmm. It was in Pose a risk to health and the consumed. consumed. Mm -hmm. Might. Mm -hmm. where, where is contamination? That portion of contamination. Uh, the portion of contamination is these products have been found to contain visible signs of contamination. Of contamination. They didn't say. They didn't visible say signs happened. of contamination. They didn't say it's been tested and verified. Mm -hmm. And said for that due to the company's lack of implementation of traceability and recall plans, which is an important requirement of the authority for food traceability and recall in case of food safety emergency, the authority urgently asks for the withdrawal of the best bottled water from the market. Mm. Good, so. so, and then they went and say, well, we are here by urgent So preparation. this is uh, food So food this, safety. for me, I, uh, you know, that yesterday I was sitting with a couple of journalists and we are talking about this and said, and I said, probably it will also be important that they explain how they reach this conclusion. Mm -hmm. So this is, did they look at the bottle? So this is because right. inside the water is colored like some water in, an, in a I well in Kiel. I was say it wouldn't happen. Oh, that I think it really seem to suggest mm -hmm. that best company fall in some standards in uh, in their in their in their process processing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, that's Most how I see it. You look at your Perhaps they have not. They have not met. They seem to forget them. Well, they said they are, some some they are distributing water that do not meet the hygienic that's requirements right. mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. for food and uh, for food and feed yeah. as per mm -hmm. their quality assurance act. So this is the so this is the FSQC flex in their muscle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think it, I think it looks like. like yeah, so that, thank you guys for the wonderful for me, I was deliberations. Scared. I mean, I've played uh, tuba with this bottle of water for long. Yeah. Uh, well, probably it's just now. Let's hope that uh, 
It's not one we, we, we've been drinking yesterday or day before. <laughs> that's contaminated. Yeah, so that's all for what has been trending on social media. I hand over to you, Joy. Thank you very much, Mustafa. That was quite interesting and interactive. Over to you now, Mustafa K. Dabo. Uh, thank you very much. Um, there are a lot of things we share in common, but I was surprised I didn't hear the... Uh, the I don't know whether newspapers carried that, but the economy... Uh, the Gambia government has debased the, okay. uh, uh, the GDP, I sort of recalculate the Calculate. GDP, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's expanded now to, I think, $1.6 yeah, billion. I think, I think it was mm -hmm. called last From week. where? From uh, where? If it was from one finance dollars. minister's mm -hmm. press conference, it was called. Yeah, yeah. so was, this is significant because mm -hmm. what it does is that it reduces our debt to GDP ratio mm -hmm. to 88% instead of 136%. Mm -hmm. It used to be 136% mm -hmm. as of end 2017. So yeah. this means you see even the even the the very latest reports on the Gambian economy, such as the Forbes ranking mm -hmm. and the doing the business index, they all looked at this previous one, which is 136, and now it will be this one they are looking at. So so that means we are now not paying that kind of money to service loans. Absolutely, we are paying still, still paying. But, but at least it has been reduced from 136 to 88. Yeah. Okay, you, you know, technically right. it has not been reduced. So what happens is that it's like, um, it's like the, the GDP of the Gambia, it's what has been recalculated. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like to include some other areas of the economy that has not been included before, like livestock. Mm -hmm. And, and also the uh, horticulture. It's like Nigeria debased their economy some couple of years ago and include Nollywood. It's mm -hmm. Nollywood, right? What yeah. I mean, it's all, it's as all, as all goods Nigeria, and services. Yeah. It's, it's mainly goods and services that are, that are generated generated. within the economy. That's what you calculate. Yeah. Yeah. And you give us the worth. Mm -hmm. yeah. The worth of it. Yes. So the worth of it. So now you have the goods and services within the economy and you calculate it and give us the worth of it to meet 80 billion dollars mm. yes. now one billion dollars now we took so much loan we took loan took loan took loan until we get to the loan that equals mm -hmm. our worth yes. mm -hmm. you know and, and even this was not, pass, there's no guarantee that they will potentially, all of them will potentially realize they are all monies in the pack, pack basket here it's just an estimate GDP? Yes, so it's like what we are worth in what the what we no, are goods worth. and services that is generated that has already been produced. Yes, within the economy, that's what the GDP for that for the past product. year. Yeah, but that's already realized in terms of uh, fiscal um, reality. Yes, I am saying like uh, I don't understand what I'm saying. What I'm it's, saying it's, is it's, now, it's, yeah. what does it do now? Does it mean now that if we are worth one billion, but our loan is over one billion? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, we still have a deficit. We should we'll pay all what we are worth, and we still have debts. Yeah. Yes. So it's like. So there is no room for okay, creating is, employment, yes. creating uh, yeah. all that. So you know that's also different all from like the budget, like how much we allocate for yearly development. That's yes. about nine billion dollars, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, just little amount of money. Yeah. So, but this one is how much we that we is generated. Worth. Yes, within the economy. Mm -hmm. So. Our debt to GDP ratio was 136. So now, when you recalculate yeah. the GDP, they debase the GDP. Yeah. I realized that actually the goods and services that are generated within the Gambian economy annually mm -hmm. more than is both. more than we, we, we previously we previously had. Yeah. So, so, so now you increase that. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, so it's like, like like you have. It's like we now know. Yeah, mm -hmm. So it's like you have two cups. You have two cups. This one is smaller and this one is bigger. Yeah. And this one is bigger. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, if you put this one inside this one, you know it would be. It can still fit. Yeah. But then a little space would yes. mm -hmm. be there. Mm -hmm. But if you enlarge this one. A huge space will be there, but okay. that does not mean that this is reduced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It means this, this size is, is still there. Yeah. Is, yeah. So that means our, still our debt is still the same yeah. amount it is, yeah. but because our GDP has expanded. now expanded, mm -hmm. so the debt has come down mm -hmm. as per the GDP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what this gives us is that when your GDP is too much, it's not the debt, when your debt to GDP ratio is too much. Yeah. It gives lenders feel. Yeah. 
worried. Mm -hmm. And if we give money to these people, they, they, they can pay. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they are poor and even the worth of the economy, goods and services, everything that's generated in Well, is it a good idea to go for that loan in the first place? Have we not been, haven't we not been warned not, not to do that? Yeah, okay. Do we have we an alternative? Well, recently. Mm. Uh, the report online that the French about the French thing was not a loan. It was a grant. Mm -hmm. It was France making goods on their promises mm -hmm. of a and pledge they, they have made at Brussels. Yeah. So what they did was about 30 something. I will come to the loan, the, the EU company Europe. of the thing. Mm -hmm. So um, so the loan thing, um, we still have risk. You know, even IMF talked about it. Yeah. Uh, they talked about uh, uh, that because uh, at the, at the 8 it is still, still a very high percentage. Very yeah. high. It's and in eight. fact, they said it's, the f it's four times mm -hmm. higher than the re regional average. Mm -hmm. So, 88 is still a significant figure. I mean, other countries have cried when our debt portfolio has reached the level that. Let's, yeah. that. Let, let's put this into perspective. How much of this loan was inherited by the present government? I, the last I checked, I was told in 1994 our debt portfolio was four billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Now it's mm -hmm. And now it's fifty-six billion, I think. So I see. Mm -hmm. so, 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 it, it, so I, I think it's billion. safe to say over fifty billion has been inherited in from, them, by from the now. So this it's government inherited possible. all these things. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so. so what yeah. debt does is that. It, 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 what it does is that yeah, you, you may know that it reduces your chances of getting investment. Yeah, but I have, I have a question though. Uh, we know that there are several sectors that contribute to GDP and there are other sectors who are not counted in the GDP. For, mm -hmm. for example, rural economies uh, that do, are not necessarily captured uh, in the... Uh, and also, and there is a gender component to how these things are, are calculated also. Majority of the women who are in the economy are not necessarily... Uh, yeah, they, they have been left out. So, what has changed from last year to this year that we have seen an expansion of the GDP from your perspective? So what sectors are doing well? Because I know that the agricultural sector is uh, going down a little bit. Tourism is picking up, I think. The service sector has also assumed the, the biggest contributor to the GDP. Uh, as opposed to agriculture. So what has changed from last year to this year that we are seeing an expansion? So, so here is the thing. Um, like you said, mm -hmm. previously, I'm not an economist, but I did a little bit of these things when I, when mm -hmm. I was uh, doing a story. Um, so previously, mm -hmm. there were certain aspects that you said, made mm -hmm. mention of, mm -hmm. of uh, certain components of the service sector, like the construction mm -hmm. sector, mm -hmm. uh, the horticultural sector, mm -hmm. life sex, sec, livestock sectors. Mm -hmm. this, this, is, this is real economic activity happening mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. But these are areas that were not previously factored in when they were recalculating the GDP. Now, mm -hmm. there are countries that do this every five years. Mm -hmm. Now, because economic activities develops, country develops, economy continue to expand. Mm -hmm. Now, what they do is that at every, in every five years, they would recalculate the GDP and look at new sectors that have suffered. Like, for instance, if the Gambia's movie sector seems to have done well in the next five years and contributes enormously to the income of, uh, you know, Gambians, and this is an area that Gambia could look at and say, well, a lot of money is being generated in this sector, you know, and then we look at and, and value how much. Mm -hmm. that that resources is mm -hmm. and then add on to what we said was goods and amounts to the goods and services generated within the economy in a in a year mm -hmm. so these are the key sectors that they look at that's mm -hmm. what makes the you know the the, the thing to go up from mm -hmm. um it's from 15 49 billion in 2013 to 65.5 billion mm -hmm. what do you have yeah. next year mustafa quickly so, because so, we're ready so quickly to yes quickly we will talk about, um, I'm a bit slow, um, we'll talk about uh, Gambia, you know, the ECOWAS ministerial meeting is happening here, we've, we've not looked at it, um, mm. they're thinking about uh, it, it's uh, ECOWAS um, meeting on uh, money laundering and terrorism financing, um, mm. you know that ECOWAS has a special institution called mm. GAIBA, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, those some call it gear, but right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, to yeah, fight kind of terrorism of financing and, and, mm-hmm. and money lending in the country. Uh, the ministerial meeting starts today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there have been plenary discussions by experts on how. And Gambia had actually said they want to pass um, a law criminalizing market manipulation, mm-hmm. which is, of course, as a result of recommendations from Gambia. But Gambia mm-hmm. actually uh, is one of the countries that is. Uh, has always been said to being affected seriously by mm-hmm. money laundering because we don't have strong market regulations. Mm-hmm. You know, we have all this mark, all these banks coming here and then mm-hmm. yes, real estate banking population. Yes, real estate, real estate companies. Estate companies. And yet the banking population is very small. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it is the belief of this institution that a lot of dirty money mm-hmm. is being laundered through our financial I mean institutions. The, I mean, it is. Uh, people who use the banks relative to our population is small. Yes, yes we have too many banks. Yes, <laughs> yet we have too many banks. Yes. So, you know, and then this yearly guy releases report on, you know, to, to, to talk to Gambians about, uh, to talk to, to uh, engage Gambian authorities about mm-hmm. um, uh, money laundering issues. So, but uh, we may quickly talk about the EU. Um, mm-hmm. The EU has given 55 million. Mm-hmm. Budget support to mm-hmm. the Gambia, 55 million euros. A lot this, of money for Kiyama. Yeah. yeah, perhaps finally the stuff that Barrow promised to Kiyama would come. Would come. Mm-hmm. 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 He promised, uh, no, he promised but nothing. Uh-huh. We but don't actually need anything. This was meant for infrastructure or no, it's not the budget support. Budget support. Yeah. Well, they could go for any good for, go for anything. Maybe we would mm-hmm. increase the salaries too. Uh, to, to oh, they, they are to to it's just to solve the budget deficit. <laughs> they are not to do that. Or probably you'll be keen to carry out uh, infrastructural projects because they sell for anybody who has an electoral ambition. Yeah, but do we? As, yeah, as, he's, suppo- as, he's, exp- as he's accused of nothing now. Yeah, so. Now, okay. here is the thing. I, I'm usually, I mean, I, maybe this is not a good thing, but I'm usually pessimistic about uh, EU support to the Gambia. I am privy to uh, a scenario where EU promises so much amount of money to the Gambia, but they also offer the technical services where majority of the money they promise get paid them. back yeah. to their people. So but at the end of the day, Gambia has almost but, but nothing. But I have, I like, have, uh, I have uh, a view to that. Um, mm-hmm. get, I mean, African governments or mm-hmm. implementing agencies are not. We've, we've been talking about how mm-hmm. our the potentials in terms of tangible achievements we could get from football from all the FIFA millions mm-hmm. are not the case. If we desire to build 10 kilometers of road, mm-hmm. in my view, mm-hmm. I don't care who take care of that project. Mm-hmm. As long as we are going to get 10 kilometer no, here yeah, is here yeah, is here yeah, is why you should tell people. people. Mm-hmm. We have seen it. I mean, it, since independence, how many projects implemented by government agencies have failed? We, we are we running out of, of time? time because We're of, definitely because running of out of time. Now, if the EU is giving you money, the Chinese are building the how to call it the conference center. Mm-hmm. Okay, there are very few government involvement. If you like, etc. You may argue that okay, perhaps government this thing is in. But I don't know where we get. A, you know, I mean, a conference center. Which no, but it, this is yeah, not yeah, the same thing. Infrastructural yeah. development is one thing. You have the EU has their priority priority areas. For example, uh, as I saw with the the report, that the money that has been given to support the budget was also meant to strengthen good, good governance. Ah, so it's you get support. my point. Now you are talking yeah. about the political uh, budget uh, support uh, and support good governance. Talking about mm-hmm. The, the, the expectations they, they get, I mean, the conditions, yeah. so to speak. So, obviously, no obviously, none of that money will be spent on the tangible uh, development support that the Gambia needs. Well, and and finally, finally, I may quote you the Faraba report, a white paper has been drafted and submitted to the president. We've always hmm. prayed for it to be done, and Barrow has finally got the courage to do it. And now so, we're waiting for the outcome. So, so it's a public now. No, but it will yet. be public soon. The Justice Minister said it will be public soon. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 and yeah, because you might, uh, the I thank you for that report to come out. So we'll yeah. to thank on. you very much, Mr. Bakeda. Well, that was quite insightful. And next we'll have, um, we'll be featuring Chop In Bar and Restaurant, which is located at Kololi. Let's watch what they have for us.
mange to da bakari baji restaurant bi nyunko oye chopping bar and restaurant opposite gtb bank and stop step for a machine senegal almost opposite with the military base camp bifineka Um, Man Mang Face starts since 2013, chopping bar and restaurant. Why Lo one can say it's an international restaurant. Food bo halat in the restaurant or hotel. Any service bo halat, nyungko fedef in chopping bar and restaurant. Well, so you have seafood. Lobu garek nyungko am shrimps, gambas, lobster, fish, calamari, yep nyungko safi. Anyhow nyungko bugerek, yes, yep nyungko saf. Fish, so nyewe with grill, garlic sauce, yep nyungko am. Shrimps, so bugerek with garlic, vegetable, prawns with um, breadcrumbs, yep nyungko saf. Calamari is the same. So fito gesa balanga jelsa order o so leke be pare munga duga sibir nyunge am fofu ban restaurant also binyo oye VIP nyungfa am pool bo hamne danga play entertain sabopa with your partner binga andal whether sa jabar o sa friend ga andal fofu with fully air condition mo faneka so lo hala rek mu sibir TV nyari TV mo faneka bena bi mungla entertain music bena bi mungla entertain so buge al jazeera BBC, CNN, Danga Talk, Satan News all over. Inside VIP, yep, Nyungko Ampo. So, new AC service, be, especially the staffs and the kitchen. Ligana importance as a customer pour mu del wat back to the hotel or the restaurant is in the kitchen food binga le kafi is okay daga gis so so dem in town fo nga wassa borom ni man ma nga dem on chopin se le kafi is one yanga gis so nyewe se service bi staff si they are entertaining the customers like anyhow like comme ñom sen bopa la ñoo ne ka hamga di saval sen bopa because ñom they don't care who are you or something like that Especially Gambians. They are very so much particular about the Gambians. They entertain them very well. In this restaurant here, they are going to be Why not? Most of the Gambians know overcome all over in this restaurant here. Gambians are regular chopping yaka. So they are going to be anywhere in Europe. I'm not lying or TV in front of me. Anywhere in Europe, you go there, you'll have the name of chopping bar and restaurant. So one can say within this area is number one restaurant here. We don't see where the location is or something like that. Yeah. There is some customer service with Mumbai now. But for you, you can friend and then so you come then they will hack you. Come on, it like then they will call you to meet. From they are all friendly. I feel like I'm not only new to the country, fresh here, fresh my mind with them, and as my friends in the hangar. As one of us in business number, yange am two triple one two one three. Ngenyo manse suma bopa maiwa hayo am the manager here seven three five three five one zero. 
any time except delivering mom la new plan right now anything lo order you deliver ko why so you know because of you don't want to waste any your time you can call within 10 15 minutes so you will take a select be parana welcome back after that special entry uh, to the come in restaurant bar and restaurant and now we've almost come to the end of the show but before we do so uh let's hear the final words of our panelists mr lani chan would you have to tell our views yeah i think the the, uh, the week on the review was quite interesting the story uh, from about the caste system and the URR. I hope this will be the end of it and the government will take a firm action to stem this kind of uh, practice before it goes out to other places. And I also hope that the voices raised by the victims of the November 11, 20, uh, 1994 massacre would also add to the uh, already sustained search for justice for victims of uh, the Jammer re regime and provide uh, food for TRRC. I'm looking forward to maybe we don't wish it quite a week, but a peaceful week. You I look forward to a peaceful week as well and hope that all of those vices in the past will not repeat themselves. People need to know that societies evolve and when societies evolve, we have to evolve with them. Some of these cultural practices no longer have any uh, stance in our uh, in our lives. Uh, they are not our experiences and they should be left in the past. Mustafa? Yeah, well, me, I look forward to release of Faraba. I'm always <laughs> after news, so huh. that's what makes news for me. Thank you. Uh, we want to thank our viewers for always being with us. But before we leave, we want to remind you, for all your real estate needs, always visit EJ Investment because they have the best real estate buildings that you can ever expect. We want to thank all of you for staying tuned with us on our very special brunch show. And join us next week for another exciting edition of The Brunch. I remain your host, Joy Mama. Thank you.